Welcome to the BioBalance HealthCast, episode number 390. Why are so many of us overpaying for our prescription medicines? BioBalance HealthCast features conversations about positive aging. Your hosts are Dr. Kathy Maupin, Medical Director of BioBalance Health and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging, and Brett Newcomb, a licensed professional counselor. Dr. Maupin and Brett are the authors of The Secret Female Hormone, the seminal work about hormone replacement therapy for women, which is available on Amazon or from Dr. Maupin's office at BioBalance Health. Dr. Maupin's office is currently accepting new patients. There was an article in the St. Louis Post-Dispatch this week that talked about the disparity, the discovery of a disparity that in the drug prices that people were, were paying at the pharmacy. When you go, when you have a prescription, you go to the pharmacy, you hand it to the pharmacist, and they say, oh, here's your, here's your drug, and it's going to cost you X. And what they found out is that the average American is spending, on average, 23%. 23% more than they have to for the drug. And that they discovered that this has to do with something called pharmacy benefit uh, management systems. They're middlemen that work between the insurance company that you have your company or you have your insurance with and the patient and the drugstore. These are mega companies like Express Scripts is one mm-hmm. that's big here in St. Louis and this is what they but do. But they're actually a pharmacy. But they're also a benefit management right. company, mm-hmm. and that division of them is one of the the, the mm-hmm. things that are is talked about in the article. Not they don't identify them specifically, but mm-hmm. there are several different companies that do this. So these are companies that make contracts between the pharmaceutical manufacturing companies <laughs> and the pharmacies that determine the cost that the pharmacy has to pay to get the medicine, and that they charge you. And this is all encompassed in the envelope of your insurance coverage. And so what most of us are habituated and trained to do is we go to the pharmacy, we hand them our prescription, they and we hand them our insurance card. And they come back and say, okay, your insurance copay is 10, 20, 30, 50, whatever it is. There are usually brackets on most people who have copays uh, mm-hmm. for their insurance. And their drugs fall into certain categories. And so for the category one drugs, the, the copay is like $10. The mm-hmm. category two drugs, it's $20. Category four drugs, it's $100, whatever you have to, mm-hmm. to pay. So that's what we're used to paying. That's what we assume we're gonna pay. We know that that copay for that drug is $10, so this drug should cost me $10. Mm-hmm. So if I go to the pharmacy and I get the prescription and I hand them my insurance card and they say, well, that'd be $10. I'm good, when, when we go home happy. What they found out is that many of those drugs, especially in the category one, category two copay domains, cost less to you, the the buyer, if you pay cash. If you pay cash for the drug, the cost of that drug that the pharmacy gets from the manufacturer is maybe $6. So it's $4 less, 25%, if you pay cash. But the contract that the pharmacy has with the benefits management company does not allow the pharmacist to tell you that. Right. They have a gag order in the contract. Unless you, you ask. Unless you ask. You have to go in, and this main thing we want you to hear today, when you go to get a prescription filled, ask, what would that cost if I paid cash for it? Mm-hmm. Out of pocket, cash today. Mm-hmm. It is often cheaper than your copay. In certain drugs. for Especially the first two tiers. The right. more exotic the drugs, the more generic name drugs that move up into the other categories of the formulary, maybe not. And many of the drug companies uh-huh. that know this right. are now increasing the prices of those particular drugs. So the that cheaper ones? Or the, the cheaper ones. So yeah. that they can just arbitrarily, so that they can make yet more money. Right. You know, they're charging the pharmacies more for the same drug than they did two years ago. I mean, the prices have gone up drastically on all drugs that I write. People right. come in and say, you wrote me a drug and, and my copay is $100 for this drug. Well, in cash and in copay, it was like 20 bucks last year. Right. So so it is. there's something else going on besides this. Right. So if you have expensive drugs, then your copay is going to be, sometimes they, it's 
it's outside your copay. They say, we don't have a copay for this. And you end up paying a couple hundred bucks a month. Or your insurance company will tell you that's not in our formula. It's not covered. We don't cover it. We don't pay for it at all. So, so you have you insurance, it, you pay for it. very expensive insurance that you right. pay for. You think it's going to cover your drugs. The, they've been they've been playing a shell game. They charge you more. They act, the insurance company does. They pay the, the, the pharmacy less. And they pay these other companies a fee, but they still make more profit per pill that you have to take and you have to take it. This is this. I want to say it's a conspiracy, but it's not. It's a, it, it is basically a free market capitalism. It's not free market. We have to take these drugs. They're required. It's kind of like water and electricity and right. heat. If you have that, if you have an illness and you don't take it, you could die or you could be unable to work. So that's like if, in the American Southwest, if I control all the water, I have a monopoly on water. You yes. have to pay whatever I want to charge you right. to get my water. And the pharmaceutical companies have now had multiple um, drug trademarks and the, the ability to make that drug mm. bought by people who are investment bankers. And then they triple the price and then your price goes up by more than triple, and it's it's truly outrageous. Well, I mean, the, you could pay $1,000 a month for some of these drugs. The, the thing most of you probably have heard about if you've been alive in the last two years is the EpiPen controversy. Right. The EpiPen, the, the, a, an investment hedge fund, bought the ownership of the company that made the EpiPens. They were selling them, and, and they're required by law to be in certain places, like if you have, elementary schools, high schools. Yeah, you have to have, in a doctor's office, doctor's you have office. to have an EpiPen that has not expired in right. your um, cardiac resuscitation kit. And everybody has to have one in every office that they have, medical office. Okay. Every, er, many areas in the hospital have to have it. But most, most importantly, people have to carry them if they have a type of allergy that will cause them to stop breathing and have right. their, ha, and, and die. Like bee stings. Like bee stings, or uh, if they have shellfish and they don't know it in their food, and they're 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 peanuts. truly allergic peanuts. They have to have the EpiPen to save their lives. Right. right. So they'll die if they don't have it. So the the price went up by I don't know three hundred percent, five hundred percent, something went from like that. Like seventy five dollars to seven hundred dollars. Right. I mean, and how does that make sense? And why why are we so putting they up interviewed with that? the owner of the hedge fund? And said, why did this happen? Did the cost go up? Are you trying to recover what it's costing you to make it? And he laughed on camera and said, no, I, I can get it. I can get it and I can make as much money as I, as I want. Off of I it. want because only That's one company makes it. That's the way the free market it. system works. So he's now in jail for other kinds of fraud. <laughs> but it, it's shocking. It's disgusting. It's dangerous. And it's legal. So it ought to be illegal. So... <laughs> We are trying to find solutions to the problems. And, and this morning in the newspaper, Senator Claire McCaskill mm -hmm. from Missouri is proposing two solutions, two approaches to the problem that she wants to have passed into law. To make affordable me uh, medicines to Medicare and Medicaid patients. Yes. She has uh, conducted a study or has encountered a study that shows that the drug cost for Medicare and Medicare patients have increased by 50% over the last four years. Some of those, and especially for the top 20 prescribed uh, drugs for older people, some of them have gone up as much as 400% in four years. Yeah. And her offering, suggestion, is twofold. One, that Congress ought to pass a law allowing, because it's not allowed now, it's not legal, allowing the United States government to negotiate bulk pricing with pharmacy manufacturers for drugs for Medicare and Medicaid, because they're the biggest purchasers of those drugs mm -hmm. in the world. And they're not benefiting from any discounts for bulk purchase numbers. And they said, why can't we do this? Well, it's illegal. So she wants to make it legal. Mm -hmm. There are people that disagree with that. The second thing she wants to do is outlaw the, these gag orders on what are called the clawback contracts mm -hmm. that pharmacies and pharmacy benefit managers have between them. The gag order is the one that says your pharmacist can't say to you, oh, it's going to cost you $10, but if you want to pay cash, it's only going to cost you 6 They can't do that by law, by contract. She wants to eliminate that. 
Uh, she says the pharmacist ought to be able to say to the patient that they know mm -hmm. that lives in their town and, and mm -hmm. you're, oh, hi, Bill, how are you? Uh, yeah, you could save 10 bucks on this mm -hmm. drug. If they, you just paid for it. <laughs> yeah, if you just pay cash for it, don't mm -hmm. use your insurance. Mm -hmm. She wants to make that legal. She wants to make that required. And I think that's a good idea. And that and that's one of the things that comes down to the patient. To the pa yeah. Until this is passed, until you read about it in the paper, right. or hear it on the news, you should always ask your pharmacist as you're picking up your prescription before you pay for it, uh -huh. how much would it cost if I paid cash? And then they will tell you, they have to tell you then if you ask that. So once you know that, then you are going to be able to know you, you can make a choice. You can save 23% on your drugs if right. you have those type of drugs. Now, not all drugs are basically um, clawback drugs. No. Ones well, that cost it, less than what your copay is, but there's enough that you should be able, as a consumer, be able to know this and, 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 and on purpose, this is so complicated so that we can't find out things. But you should know what it costs you and you should know what your insurance company is paying on your behalf. Sometimes you get those things sent to you, right? But uh, but you should also be able to make a decision on which pharmacy you go to because many pharmacies are in the Good RX system. That's an app, and this is that you an app put on a phone. That's a free app that it tells you which pharmacies charge you what if you're paying cash for a certain drug, and you yeah. can go to a pharmacy and pay less for that drug in cash, then your insurance would would charge you. So the way that works is you download the app, it's free. You go to the app store on your phone. If you have a... Uh, 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 they're on iPhones, they're on all the phones. If you have one, you should know how to do this. You And then you set it up. You program into it all the drugs that you take or someone in your family takes. And then it will, uh, when it's time, and you get a new prescription mm -hmm. for an ADD medicine, say, you look that drug up on your uh, good RX app, and it will tell you where you are. It will tell you all the drugstores surrounding five, 10 miles, whatever you set it to go out in your area, and it tells you the cash price that each one of them will pay. So if you go to the drugstore at Sam's, it'll say Sam's will charge you $45 for this drug. Walgreens, two blocks away, will charge you $53 for this drug. Mm -hmm. Walmart, five blocks away, will charge you $43 if you pay cash. Or so, you can just go to your regular pharmacy and have your insurance card and pay whatever your copay is. Mm -hmm. But the co you have to know your copay for yeah, that drug yes, too. Yeah. So if your copay is um, $100 for that drug, then you can buy it and you can save a lot of money. That because it's every month. My, I mean, you just have to multiply this by twelve, and and your savings by every month that you fill your prescription. It's a lot of money. It's so convoluted and complex. My my son was on our insurance. He's twenty three. He was on our insurance while he was in college. He graduated. He got a job. Our insurance, in its formulary, which is the list of drugs they will pay for, his ADD medicine cost us fifty dollars a month copay. I'm not, I don't know what it costs the, the insurance, company. insurance company, but it costs us $50 a month. So when he transferred off of our insurance onto the insurance at the company where he works, different mm -hmm. policy, he called to get his, his medicine and they said that will be $250 right. copay. And he was like, what? what? <laughs> and I, I, so was I. Yeah. And we tried to find out what's going on here. Mm -hmm. So what we found out was his insurance company's formulary didn't include the brand name drug mm -hmm. at the same price that he was getting mm -hmm. before but that if he would go to the generic drug same drug mm -hmm. that they could get it to him for 200 190 something like that mm -hmm. with this good rx app that we found he can get it for 145 mm -hmm. so Cash. it's still three times what we were paying six months ago Mm -hmm. But at least he, he can get it at a more affordable price than using the copay on his insurance. Right. Which, which means either the price of the drug went up. Right. Or the insurance company just, the, the new insurance company just decided that they were going to, they couldn't negotiate a deal or they were just going to charge a lot for that, for that drug. We, and we don't know. And, and we don't know how to find out. 
and there's no way to find out. But we can complain so to our elected to, representative. Yeah. I mean, it should be transparent. You're paying for it. You're the, cl you are actually, you're the customer, right? You should be able to know what your insurance company is paying for and what you're going to have to pay for, pay for a drug or any kind of care. Yeah. I mean, it's even more difficult if you talk about hospitalizations. There's, there's no way to find out beforehand what you're going to be paying for. Right. But in, in my circumstance, I have a, we have a large co we have a large deductible. So deductible means the amount of money you have to pay before the insurance company will pay anything that year. It starts over every January. Yeah, it does. And so, so every January, if you were on drugs that were costing you a total of $150 uh, copay in December, now you may be paying $2,000 for those same drugs. Yeah. And uh, at least until you hit your deductible. Until you hit your deductible, which is $6,000. Right. Which is a lot to hit in the first several months of the year. Right. So you get the, so you can, your employer can choose any kind of deductible. That's not even the highest deductible that there is. So you can take, you can look at your deductible and call them and say, so, you know, where can I get this particular drug that's in your formulary for, a, you know, for less money, lower copay? Can I go to Express Scripts and get three months supply right. and, uh, and get a cheaper medication? Because there are some diabetes medications that are over $1,000 a month. They're injections, which is outrageous. Yeah. So, um, so to do that, if I had a patient that had to do this and she took her medication to a pharmacy and they said that'll be uh, $1,200 for, for her monthly right, right. diabetic drug. And she said, no, I can't do that. And so right. she walked out and she called her insurance company and they said, yep, that's what it costs. Too bad. And she said, well, I don't have $1,200. I need my medication. Right. So then she, then she went to, um, then she, she called, she said, well, if I buy three months supply from the place you tell me to send it to, which is Express Scripts, what is it going to cost for three months supply? Is it going to be three times $1,200 or is it going to be less? And the woman at the insurance company said, it's going to be the same. It's going to be three times $1,200. And I know that that can't be true because there's a filling fee added on and a, they send it to you in the mail. There's a fee on that. If they send it once for three months, I know it's going to be Cheaper less. Than send it three times. So this woman had no idea and she was not happy when my patient told her she knew that that couldn't possibly be. So she said, call, call Express Scripts. So she called Express Scripts. So just think all this time that she's right. wasting in her day to figure this out. She goes to Express Scripts and they said, well, if you buy three months supply of that same drug, you will pay. And I think I think it was close to eighteen hundred dollars. But that's three months when she had one month for twelve hundred dollars. Right. So she scraped up the money and got, three, and got months three months supply of that drug because when you divide when you divide the eighteen hundred by three, that's six hundred dollars, and that was better. Six hundred dollars. That's ridiculous. Well, but I mean, it's obscene. It's more than ridiculous. And so, so but, it can't cost anything close to that. But how do we make a change in the system? I mean, you go back to Claire McCaskill's discussion for Medicare and Medicaid drugs, special Medicare mm -hmm. drugs. So many older people would not be able to track those phone calls and no. that information mm -mm. to reach a decision. They need somebody to do that for them. Right. Or they give up. And they, and don't they just take don't the medicine. take their drugs. You know, and so is that a is that a plan on somebody's right. part is to that say the old goal? people need to die off? Yeah, so because you know, we made they don't it so the complicated they can't get their drugs. Exactly. Now <coughs> or too expensive for them to get their drugs. Right. So, um, that may, and, you know, and anything's possible, <laughs> <That's kind of laughs> serious. anything's possible, but I mean, yeah. I think that even people, people who are younger and aren't living on, on, uh, their pensions are also suffering and they can't afford their drugs and there's, and they need to go to work. So they need their medication. It used to be ethical. You yeah. drug companies, pharmace, pharmaceutical companies, used to be ethical and they would at least keep the price to a point where people could afford it. Now there's no ethics in pharma in pharmaceuticals at all. Profit they just all. it's profit and part of it is they're there they are traded on the stock market and so are insurance companies. Yeah. All the money is going to stockholders. If you don't have enough money to buy stock, if you don't 
want to buy stock just to just to get a, a benefit from all the money you're spending on your own drugs yeah. or on your own health care, then you're in trouble. And and there's people who are doing nothing that are making money on the fact that they'll charge you anything for your drugs. That's wrong. And I think that's what Claire McCaskill should be looking at. Take away. They should be not for profit. I mean, not for profit hospitals still make a profit because they still sure. build buildings sure. and not for profit pharmaceuticals could still make a profit, but they wouldn't be raping the American public. And another ingredient that we're not talking about is the same drug that's made by the same manufacturer in the same plant and shipped to Canada, England, India, France. The people in those communities can buy that drug for three dollars and eighty two cents. You're gonna pay seven hundred dollars. And they're not subsidized. And you're not allowed they're by their government. They're just that's just the cost. You are not allowed to buy the drugs from those countries and have them shipped in. And it's you're true. not allowed I mean you can go up there physically, if you can get there, cross the border into Canada or Mexico, buy the volume of drugs that you can buy and bring them home. A lot of people did that with cancer drugs. Yes. And infertility. Because they're drugs. so expensive. Mexico and Canada. But they're not expensive in other countries. Right. So why is that allowed? Why and it's are we the paying same for pharmaceutical that? company. The, the yeah. labels are the same. I've had people bring them back and say, "Look at this. What do you think?" And you know, side by side, the inf- I did the infertility stuff. Yeah. Infertility. The drug was the same. Yeah. At least it had the same label and the same company that made it. Same company, same label, same manufacturing plant made the same place. You don't. We're not talking about buying drugs from China that come in uh, unreadable <laughs> unreadable yeah packages. Uh, that are produced these under are, non-regulated these are drugs systems made here yeah and sent to other countries and then we're getting them back and we're getting them back we can buy them cheaper there but we're not supposed to if they find you at the border with this just FYI they'll take them away and you may have some kind of other so, consequence so that's an issue between you and your congressman those laws need to be changed those laws are ridiculous I mean, this isn't a, it, the free America is becoming not free America. I mean, we aren't free to do what we want As to Will do. Will Rogers said in the 1920s, we have the best government, the best Congress that money can buy. <laughs> and Thank sometimes you. it holds true now. Thank you for listening. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the Biobalance Healthcast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit biobalancehealth.com or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at facebook.com slash biobalancehealth. Find Brett Newcomb at brettnewcomb.com.